Welcome back, guys. We're doing the Walking Dead Season 10 Recap. Are you guys happy? I'm happy. Let's begin. We are back to catch you up on the insane first half of the Walking Dead Season 10. We started... Well, don't go that far. I did watch the Season 10. It, it wasn't insane, but it was good. Space, crash into a forest, and ended up in a cave. Reverse evolution. Like Milk's expiration date, consider this your spoiler warning. I'm Woody Tondorf, and this is the Skybound Rundown. Season 10 boldly opens in space with a satellite losing its orbit. Zoom down to Earth and we see Daryl and the gang training the extras on battle formations. Judith finds a face on the shore and god damn it, the Whisperers are back. That or a zombie cosplayer drowned. Also, some new things about the season. Rosita has a baby named Coco. I didn't get you anything, sorry. Alexandria has a new doctor named Dante, who says things. The way you're staring at my mouth is making me warm and tingly inside. And Ezekiel has a new girlfriend named Wackoff. She lives in Canada. She has a picture. <laughs> The satellite we mentioned earlier crashes in Whisperer territory near Oceanside, forcing Daryl and the gang to cross Alpha's border to extinguish the flames. Eugene strips the satellite for parts, and Carol and Alpha come face to face across a canyon. This is gonna go great. Flashback to the part of Alpha and Lydia's backstory where they meet Jason Voorhees, Hypeed Beta, who is holed up in an old asylum. The Airbnb did not look like this in the pictures. He and Alpha bond during a walker autopsy, and later, Alpha accidentally kills his undead friend, causing Beta to rage. Alpha suggests he honor him by wearing his friend's face for the rest of time, and he does. Look, girlfriends change you, just accept it. In the present, we meet the third wheel in Alpha and Beta's leadership, Gamma, whose real name is Mary. She's a loyal Alpha disciple and proves her worth by thwarting her own sister's attack on Alpha. I anoint you, Gamma. Also, Beta finds this nest that Alpha built for Lydia in case she returned. This one actually looked exactly like the pictures from Airbnb. Oh, and Gamma's nephew was that baby from season 9. I know, it's all connected. Back in Alexandria, waves of walkers keep showing up at the gates, and Gamma arrives with a message that Alpha wants to speak now. Michonne and the gang reluctantly take her up on it. They had basket weaving at noon and meet that night at the border. Alpha reveals she knows they've crossed her border, so as punishment, she's moving the border up and canceling basket weaving. Carol's fresh out of fuck. She really loved basket weaving, so she shoots at Alpha and misses. That's right. Three basket weaving jokes. It's a runner. Go with it. Thankfully, Alpha lets it slide and tells him to get out of here, you scamps. I'm sure she'll let that go. She seems to have a short memory. The gang holds up in an old school for the night where Carol goes full on Requiem for a Dream and hallucinates hard because she's been snacking on speed pills like hot Cheetos. Daryl is concerned. Still, she manages to fight off a gymnasium of walkers and upside down 360 no scopes a whisperer. Meanwhile, Negan and Aaron fight off some poisonous zombos in a field. Aaron temporarily goes blind from an eye infection, but Negan decides to spare him after watching Aaron bump around a cabin like Mr. Magoo. At Hilltop, a giant tree falls through a fence and the heroes suspect it's Alpha. Oh my god! Really? Back in Alexandria, tensions rise as Silence the Whisperer's graffiti starts popping up around town. While well, Lydia and the Highwaymen Rejects continue to feud after that whole wacky heads on spikes thing. When are people gonna get over that? Meanwhile, Michonne talks Ezekiel out of suicide, so he kisses her. But Michonne has not read the comic book, so she's like, nah. That night, Gage and the kids jump Lydia to avenge their friends. Oh, they had names? I didn't give a shit, honestly. Thankfully, Negan intervenes and tosses one of them against a the wall, killing her. Again, no one gives a shit. Sadiq's vision gets blurry, walkers attack Hilltop, and Daryl council meeting to decide next steps. Negan's fate is a split vote, so Gabe decides to take the night to decide. Doesn't matter because next morning, Gabe finds Negan's cell empty. Whoopsies. Cut to the forest where Negan's getting tailed by his number one stand, Brandon. He seems great. Damn! Classic Negan. He tolerates it until Brandon murders a helpless mother and son that they meet on the road. I passed, right? I am me! Hi, Brandon! Later, Hi, Brandon. Negan coincidentally runs into the man he was no looking for. Beta. Elsewhere, Magnet gets into a fight with Yumiko over stealing supplies. Alpha kills a whisperer for making a suggestion. Really need to examine the org chart. And Ezekiel reveals he has cancer. Don't rub it. Move on. Daryl and Carol search for Alpha's ward while people in Alexandria keep getting deathly sick. Dante suspects it's a classic case of the butterflies, and I suspect that this dude is not a fucking doctor. <laughs> You're right. Beta makes whisper. Negan go through various trials to get initiated into the whispers. Negan passes with flying colors and bends the knee to Alpha. I'm all in. Also, Eugene uses the satellite parts to fix his radio and makes contact with a mysterious woman. Will he be the influencer on next week's The Circle? Tune in. It's not that kind of show. That night, Carol kidnaps a whisper and tells Daryl that this was the plan all along. God damn it, Carol! Back in town, Daryl and Carol try their best Jack Bauer impressions, but the whisper refuses to talk. While Gamma and Aaron bond over bread, the Whisperer dies in prison. Turns out, he's been poisoned. Dante blames Sadiq, whose PTSD has been cranked up to Frank Castle levels. It's a Punisher joke. John Bernthal's doing fine. He has a heart-to-heart -heart with Rosita and then jumps in a lake. Or the other way around. Who cares? 
That night, Lydia runs off after finding out Carol was using her. You said you wanted me to choose a side? I choose mine. In town, Sadiq realizes he knows Dante from the beheadings. He's a whisperer. Dante realizes Sadiq's realization, and then the two of them have a heart-to-heart. -heart. No, I'm just kidding. He strangles him to death. So we lost Carl for this dude. Awesome. Rosita walks in with Coco, sees what happens, and fights Dante while killing Sadiq for good. Sad. At the bridge, Gamma tells Aaron where Alpha's horde is in exchange for auntie time with her nephew. Cute. Back in town, Daryl and the others beat up Dante and throw him in the slammer to await his trial. But Gabe says, fuck a trial. And he murders Dante in his cell and secretly burns his body that night with Rosita. These are the good guys. Aaron returns and tells him about the horde, so Daryl gets a group together to find it. On the road, Michonne and the gang do a quick supply mission at the library, where Luke gets saved by a mysterious stranger. Wait, Luke is still alive? Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> that stranger, Virgil, later gets captured by Oceanside, and Michonne learns he has access to horde-killing military weapons from the island he's from. And if there's anything we've learned in this season of The Walking Dead, it's trust strangers. It's probably part of the Sierra. He's probably part of the Sierra. Got that feeling. Rick Grimes from the air, I feel like. He agrees to leave the show to get weapons and destroy the Whispers. Next morning, Daryl and the gang come up short on the horde, but they do find Alpha, who runs into a trap. I mean cave. Carol foolishly follows her and gets everyone trapped inside, including Sweet Cherry, and if anything happens to him, I swear to God! Come on! And that does it for the first half of the walk. In that case, that's where I download episode, um... Go on AMC Premiere and re react to episode 9. Make you some smear. Thank you guys for watching this. Goodbye.